uh, my topic was fruit of the spirit or is fruit of the spirit. Um, the set of scriptures um, that everybody, you know, thinks about when you uh, say fruit of the spirit is Galatians 5, um, 22 um, through 23. Um, all of my scriptures are going to be in the um, New King James Version. It says, um, Galatians 5, 22 through 23 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. And just as a side note, Galatians um, was written by the Apostle Paul, and he was talking to the Christians of Galatia, trying to remind them who they were in God and you know the, their inheritance there of being heirs of God. So fruit is defined as a product of a tree or another plant. And spirit, of course, is the Lord. So when you say fruit of the spirit, it would be the product of the Lord. So all of these things, all of these fruits are actually product of the Lord and having the Lord in your life. So let's take a look at, the, at these fruits one by one. And the first one is love. And I believe that love is the first one because it's the most important one. You know, Jesus spoke to his apostles in John and instructed them to love one another. So let's look at John 13, 34. It says, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. As I have loved you, also love one another. So Jesus knew the entire time that he was with um, his 12 and as he spoke to them, that one of those 12 would betray him. But he would keep loving that one just as he loved the other 11. I recently saw something and it really made me stop and think when I read it because it was just the simple words that said, Judas ate too. He was treated no different. Jesus knew full well what was going to happen and he treated Judas no differently. Even right up before they came to take Jesus, he referred to Judas as his friend. So when we love as Jesus loves, then I feel like all of the other fruits just kind of follow and fall into place from that. The second fruit is joy. So joy and happiness come from the Lord. And again in John, Jesus talked to his apostles. In John 15, 11, he said, These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may remain in you, and that your joy may be full. So Jesus was telling his apostles here to keep his Father's commandments and remain in the Lord. So joy will surely follow if they're full of love to remain in God. The third one um, is peace. So peace, the peace of God is an undescribable feeling. You know, with that peace of God, you have no anxiety, no worry, no fear. So once again, um, with Jesus talking to his apostles in John 16, he said, These things I have spoken to you, that in me you remain, that you have peace, and in the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, because I have overcome the world. So you see in each of these, we're like seeing a theme here with these first few fruits. Jesus, you know, he told the apostles numerous times to remain in the Lord and these things will follow. Our next fruit is um, forbearance. So when you look up this word, it's defined as patience um, or tolerance. And I feel like, again, this plays off from the previous fruits because if you're full of love, joy, and peace then surely you will be full of patience and tolerance. I feel like Jesus was the ultimate embodiment of patience and tolerance. He knew what his outcome would be here on earth, but he still stayed with his father, did as the Lord told him to do, and completed what he came to do for all of mankind. So um, Jesus really tolerated people mocking him and doubting him, but he still continued with his purpose. He never once gave up or decided, you know, just forget about it. The next one is kindness. Jesus did show kindness to everyone, even prostitutes and tax collectors. He remained in the Lord and was again full of love and kindness, even when people questioned him like they did in Mark 2. Mark 2, 17 says, When Jesus heard it, he said to them, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And you know, Jesus had a way, you know the old saying, you kill him with kindness. He just had a way 
that any time anybody was doubting him or questioning him, he was quick to give an answer, but he was still super kind with that answer. He gave the responses or answers that seemed to make people stop and think about what they had said and what they had asked him. So our next fruit is goodness. And we use that word good a great deal in our daily lives. Good morning, good afternoon, good day. And we kind of forget, because we use it so much, what that word means biblically. So goodness is defined basically as godliness. Goodness is only possible through God's grace and mercy. Psalm 23, 6 says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So again, your remaining with the Lord is really dependent on these fruits. I mean, in all of these things that we're talking about, you know, you, you're remaining in, in Christ and keeping the Father close to you. The next fruit that we have is faithfulness, and we all know what faith is. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. You know, faithfulness comes from trusting the Lord, being full of faith. We're faithful to the Lord because He's faithful to us. You know, the scriptures say He'll never forsake you. He'll never leave you. He's there with you. So you're the next fruit that we have is gentleness. And it can be defined as meekness, not rough, not sudden or rash or angry. And here again, gentleness plays off of love because a heart full of love is a gentle heart. In Matthew 11, Jesus is talking to his disciples and tells them in 1129, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in, my, in heart, and you will find rest in your souls. And again there, he's telling them to stay connected, because like what a yoke is, you're, you're connected. So to stay connected to him, because he is gentle and humble. And lastly, the fruit, our last fruit is self-control. And that's simply just being able to control oneself. Self-control is choosing to give up, trying to control things on your own, and surrendering to God. In Proverbs 25, 28, it says, Whoever has no rules, or self-control, over his own spirit is like a city broken down without walls. So when we don't have self-control, our lives, is just, they're just full of chaos and confusion, and we're vulnerable to the bad things. But when we give God the control in our lives, the difference is amazing. Now, once I was you know, studying, and like I've said earlier, you know, it all has a common theme, all of the fruits. You have to walk in the Spirit to have those fruits of the Spirit. To produce these fruits, you must walk in the Spirit. You have to remain in the Lord and put down the things of the world. The Holy Spirit works in us to be more like Christ. And in Galatians 5, Paul talks about walking with the Spirit right before he was um, talking about the fruits of the Spirit. It says in Galatians 5, 16 through 19, I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. So Paul was telling the Galatians that they needed to walk by the Spirit so that they would, ever, that they would be able to have these fruits which he spoke about just a little further down in the scriptures. And if you noticed before when I was talking about each of these fruits, there's a commonality, like I've mentioned, to having each in your life, and that is remaining, um, on the, remaining in the Lord and having Christ with you. You have to fill yourself with the Holy Spirit. You have to have a relationship with the Lord. Walking by the Spirit is active. It's not passive. You know, you have to actively do things. It's not just going to fall from, from nowhere. You have to feel yourself. You have to have a relationship with the Lord. You have to build the relationship with the Lord just like you would build a relationship with your spouse or a friend. If you spend no time with your spouse or partner or even with your friends, you know, that's not much of a relationship. But you should build that relationship with God so that 
you can um, have those fruits of the spirit that you can live, you know, a peaceful life. So when you have to spend time, you have to spend time in his word and you have to actively walk by the scripture to be able to see these fruits of the spirit. So again, I feel like love is the most important fruit because as you're going through the fruits of the spirit, the, uh, you have love, but then the others you know, just fall into place. We all know um, 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 7. It says, love lo suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It's not puffed up, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. So most of the fruit, that, you know, that's what love is, and God is love. So if we're in love, we're walking in love, you know, we make that decision every day, everything else is going to fall right in behind it. So I'm a visual person, so I like to when Kenzie used the mustard seed because um, I like to put a picture in my head. They always taught me in elementary school that that was like the easiest way to remember something. So when I think about this, I think about a tree. So we're the, the base of the tree, you know, all of us or, you know, each person. Then trees can't grow and thrive without roots. So they need deep roots you know, to stay alive. So if we root ourselves in God and let Christ be those deep roots for us, then over time our branches are going to grow and they'll flourish and we will start producing these fruits. And we start to see the fruits, you know, of love, joy, and peace, and then forbearance and kindness and goodness. And we see the faithfulness and gentleness and self-control and we'll see that every single day. And it will become a second nature because, you know, no one's perfect. You're going to struggle every day, sometimes multiple times a day. But it's important to know that you continue to walk with the Spirit even when you stumble so that you can see these fruits of the Spirit produce. So when I was praying and studying and just kind of figuring out, you know, uh, I guess what God wanted me, you know, my, minus the, the study part of it, I felt like he's telling me that I just, I needed to testify and just kind of let you know, you know, let you know that this is real. <laughs> Before I came to this church, I mean, I was a, I mean, just a hot mess. I worried about everything, you know, my kids, bills, my job. But, you know, once, you know, and, I, and it's a daily walk and I'm still doing it. You know, once you let God control your life and you turn yourself over to him, I mean, I'm peaceful. I mean, ask somebody that knew me, you know, post 2016 and back versus now I'm a totally different person. I mean, I think my husband even sees it. I hope my kids see it when, but I just, it's unbelievable. You know, the, you, you don't worry. You're not worrying. I mean, the, those fruits of the spirit are there and, you know, I'm peaceful. I don't worry about the world. I'm not focused on, you know, what the devil is trying to do and he will try to do and he will continue to try to do, but you can't let it affect you. You have to walk with the Lord, um, you know, keep him close so that you can see those fruits of the spirit. And that's all I got.